Welcome to the Fun Facts Club. Today we will be discussing some fun facts about the sun. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more daily fun facts and give the video a thumbs up if you learned something new. Thank you. The sun is classified as a G-type yellow dwarf, G2V, which is a little misleading as stars in this sequence can vary in color from yellow for cooler stars, to white for the hotter ones. In actual fact our sun is just under halfway through its almost 10 billion year life cycle, and is white in color. On Earth, we see the sun as either yellow, orange, or red as these are the colors of the longer wavelength lights which make it through our atmosphere. This process is why the sky appears blue, as shorter wavelength lights, such as blue and violet, are absorbed by the atmosphere, thus giving it its bluish hue. The sun is the hottest, biggest, most massive object in the solar system, and contains more than 99.8% of the solar system's mass, with Jupiter accounting for more than 80% of the remaining 0.2%. We also know that the Sun's immense gravitational field keeps the planets from flying off into space, with its gravitational pull at the equator that is 28 times more powerful than the Earth. To put this in perspective, if you weighed 90 kilograms on Earth, you would weigh 2,520 kilograms on the Sun. Given the immense size and volume of the Sun, it is remarkable that an object with more than 1.4 million kilometers and 100,000 miles across its polar The sun generates roughly 386 billion billion megawatts of energy through nuclear synthesis, as it converts hydrogen into helium. This energy travels outward from the core, and is continuously absorbed and re-emitted at progressively lower energy levels and temperatures until it emerges from the surface, where some of it becomes visible as optical light. Some of the sun's energy is then radiated as heat, but it also powers a stream of energetic particles that is perhaps better known as the solar wind. This wind blasts through the solar system at a velocity of 450 km per second and it has destroyed dozens of satellites, and caused havoc with radio and TV reception on Earth. It has also caused major power blackouts because it causes short circuits in power grids when the energetic particles penetrate the insulation of high-tension cables and switch gear. Sometimes, the sun will blast off hundreds of millions of tons of material in the form of solar flares that are associated with sunspot activity, which seem to explode when magnetic field lines in the sun break through the surface. The sun consists of only a few elements, of which hydrogen is predominant at around 72%, and helium at about 26%, with the other elements accounting for progressively smaller amounts, such as oxygen, carbon, neon, nitrogen, magnesium, iron, and silicon. Although the sun's magnetic field is only about twice as strong as Earth's overall, the differential rotation of the sun concentrates the field in some places, where it can be as much as 3,000 times as strong as on Earth. Magnetic concentrations manifest as sunspots, and only occur up to about 45 degrees north and south of the solar equator, because it is in this region that the differences in the rotation rates of different parts of the sun is greatest. Greater disruption in the sun's magnetic field cause solar flares that can extend hundreds of thousands of miles above the surface. Less violent eruptions are known as coronal mass ejections, during which remarkable amounts of matter is blasted off the sun's surface, up to about 20 billion tons of matter in a single event. Sunspots can number from 0 to about 250 plus during each 11-year period solar cycle, after which the sun's polar magnetic field reverses its polarity. This cycle, however, is not constant and it varies with overall magnetic activity. From about 1645 to 1715, for instance, there was little to no sunspot activity, and this period became known as the Little Ice Age during which normally ice-free rivers froze over, and fields at lower altitude levels remained icebound right through the year, causing widespread famine over much of America and Europe. 
However, a causal connection between sunspot activity and climatic conditions on Earth has yet to be established, or disproved. While the Sun's core takes up the inner 25% of its structure, and accounts for 2% of the Sun's total volume, this region contains close to 50% of the Sun's total mass, given the fact that it is 15 times dense as lead. The next most massive area is the radiative zone that extends from the outer edge of the core, to roughly 70% of the way to the surface. This region accounts for 48% of the Sun's total mass, and 32% of its total volume. Photons created in the core get bounced around in the radiative zone so often that on average, it takes them about a million years to reach the surface. Common sense dictates that the further one moves away from a heat source, the cooler the ambient temperature should be, but the opposite is happening on the sun, i.e. the further one moves away, the hotter it gets. This was first noticed as far back as 1939, but recent research seems to have solved the mystery. It appears that the 10 million Kelvin, or 18 million degrees Fahrenheit temperatures in the corona, compared to only about 10 f on the surface, is the result of solar flares that are too tiny to be detected individually. During a media briefing, Jim Klimchuk, who is a solar scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, explained the coronal heating mechanism thus. The explosions are called nanoflares because they have one billionth the energy of a regular flare. Despite being tiny by solar standards, each packs the wallop of a 10 megaton hydrogen bomb. Millions of them are going off every second across the sun, and collectively they heat the corona. Problem solved.